Ladies and gentlemen, the season premiere of Friday Night Smackdown. For starters, I just want to say, I don't know how it's a season premiere when there wasn't an off-season, but this is Vince McMahon's company, so I guess it's to be expected. Anyway, the show itself that we got tonight, this October 16th, 2020 episode of Smackdown, overall, it was a watchable show. Nothing was, like, amazing. Nothing was like, oh my god, you've got to see that, which... You don't really expect from WWE weekly TV shows too much, but it's always nice if that happens. We didn't really get any like big moment like that tonight. The show was filled with a lot of all right to good stuff. For example, we had the, the Daniel Bryan return to SmackDown. That was kind of cool to see Daniel Bryan back and having the Seth Rollins, Daniel Bryan face-to-face -face interaction with the Sasha Banks and Bayley contract signing. That was fine. We had the um, main event where Roman Reigns retained the Universal Championship against Braun Strowman, and we got some more Roman Reigns Jey Uso storytelling. That was good with the New Day's farewell. So, uh, a few decent talking points. Nothing like out of out of this world. Nothing that you absolutely have to go and see right now. If you didn't see this show, there isn't one thing that you, you just need to see. I think the ending to the show was probably the best part. The Roman Reigns Jey Uso storytelling. So, what they did, we had. Goldberg watching this match in the Thunderdome, which that was something they did throughout the show. We had a different legend throughout the night watching from the Thunderdome. So we had like Mark Henry, we had Ric Flair, Jeff Jarrett was watching at one point, Goldberg for the main event. So for the main event, we had the Universal Championship on the line, Roman Reigns defending against Braun Strowman. Obviously, Roman Reigns retained the title. This wasn't one of the best Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman matches we've seen. It was good. Nothing incredible. Reigns and Strowman always have fun matches. This was no exception, but nothing incredible. So yeah, Reigns retains with like a guillotine submission. So he pretty much chokes out um, Braun Strowman. And then there's like five minutes left in the show. Afterwards, Roman Reigns spears Braun Strowman again. Then Jey Uso comes out. Jey Uso is watching from ringside. Roman Reigns is talking trash to him. Reigns gets a steel chair. And Reigns is, you know, really furthering the storyline. Like this is something which... I'm not really going to describe moment for moment what Reigns said, what Reigns did. If you want to go out and watch it, I'd recommend you go out and watch it. Reigns and Uso. The, like, the build for this has been really good. This whole storyline from Payback on has been really good with Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. I just I enjoy the work they're doing. It's entertaining. I want to see Jey Uso beat up Roman Reigns, but I, I'm entertained by Roman Reigns. So, yeah, Reigns is doing his job as a heel flawlessly. Jey Uso is like actual, like real, real good, likable babyface because of Roman Reigns. So, everything to do that main event was good. I expected like a Goldberg -ish, like appearance on the show, or maybe something with Otis. We didn't get that. We just got Roman Reigns and Jey Uso building up their match at Hell in a Cell a bit more, which was fine. Then, I guess I'll talk about this. We had the Hell in a Cell contract signing. Bailey, Sasha Banks, not a ton to talk about here. What they did was they had Sasha come out, Bailey come out. We have Adam Pearce moderating this thing. So the unofficial GM for Raw and SmackDown, Adam Pearce is moderating. They do this back and forth. Bailey says that she can't wait to, you know, beat up Sasha Banks and prove that she's nothing, you know, she's nothing on her and all that kind of stuff. Sasha Banks talking about how, you know, Bailey used her and she can't wait to, you know, get revenge at Hell in a Cell, and she's going to beat up Bailey inside the cell when Bailey can't go anywhere, when Bailey can't escape her, make her pay for giving her the neck injury, all that kind of good stuff. Nothing different, really, than what we've seen before, but, I mean, it was fine. Sasha signed the contract, Bailey didn't sign the contract, so they're trying to do the whole thing where, oh, well, the match isn't official just yet, even though we all know the match is official, because WWE on literally every social media confirmed this match like a week ago, so... Yeah, it is what it is. It's a kayfabe little mini thing they're doing where, oh, is the match official? Is, is it official? Is it going ahead? The contract wasn't signed by Bailey. Folks, the match is happening at Hell in a Cell. I don't really get why they're doing this, but anyway. So, yeah, that was the contract signing Bailey and Sasha Banks. If you're a fan of either of these two and you didn't see the segment, go out and watch it. If you don't really care and you want to know whether you should see this segment, not really. Like, it was fine, but nothing amazing. So, I mean, that was that. As for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, we had the Street Profits defending the SmackDown Tag Team Championships against Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode. Literally nothing to report here. The Street Profits retained after a DQ schmoz ending. Ziggler and Roode just got disqualified. It's a pretty dumb kind of ending. And after the match, we had 
it was just a bit of a free-for-all. My only takeaway from this is that Montez Ford is going to be, be a star as a singles guy one day. Like, he's got charisma, obviously the athleticism and whatnot, the in-ring. He's good at in-ring, which most guys are good at in-ring, but he actually has charisma. He's entertaining. I think Montez Ford as an Intercontinental Champion would be really cool. I threw out the idea on Twitter of, like, a Montez Ford versus Sami Zayn for the IC title. Some really, like, good, entertaining, charisma-packed promos there. Because Sami Zayn actually has charisma. If you actually watch the shows, you'll know that. So, yeah, I think th th that's a possibility. The tag team title thing, though, nothing really to report there. As for this, we had this, like, open the show. So, to open the show, we had Triple H and Stephanie McMahon standing in the ring, basically telling us that this is the season premiere for SmackDown. Tonight's show will feature X, Y, and Z segments and matches. And going forward, we have these superstars now on SmackDown. So... That's what they did to open the show. Then we had this brawl in the ring featuring like the mid carters of SmackDown. And then Lars Sullivan came down and cleared the ring. And Michael Cole was calling him the freak about a hundred times. Seriously speaking, Michael Cole called Lars Sullivan the freak about 300 times during this like first 20 minutes of SmackDown. It was painstaking. So we had Jeff Hardy versus um, the freak Lars Sullivan. Lars Sullivan beat him and... I mean, that was that. Like, where, where they're going to go with Lars Sullivan, I don't know. Lars Sullivan's ceiling, to me, is losing to Big E and then going back to catering. That's why I see them doing with Lars Sullivan. But who knows? Maybe they'll do something good with him. So that was the Lars Sullivan stuff. As for this, the New Day's farewell. This is the only other thing that's really of note. So we had the New Day come out, cut this like emotional promo, talking about the six years they spent together and how when they started, they didn't know... You know where this would go. They had you know no clue what you know what journey they'd be taken on. But this group, this dynamic with Big E, um, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, it clicked. It saved Kofi Kingston's career. It gave Big E purpose. Big E was talking about all the times they were sitting in random towns eating waffles and you know talking about their f you know family lives, talking about Woods's kids, Kofi's kids, Big E's TV. This long-winded emotional segment. So that they do that. Then we do this big six-man tag team match. It goes for like 15 minutes. We have the Bar and Shinsuke Nakamura or Nakamura Cesaro and Sheamus, however you want to call it. They do the six-man tag team match. The match was good. Like, it wasn't a bad match. It was a fine match. The New Day win. Everyone was expecting a Big E heel turn after the match. Did it happen? No. So, yeah, the ways to be seen. Big E's now a singles guy on SmackDown. Uh, Kofi and Xavier are going to go after Raw to be Raw Tag Team Champions. So, that was that. And then lastly, the last thing I'll talk about, Daniel Bryan made his return to SmackDown tonight. He came out, and then Seth Rollins interrupted him. We had a Daniel Bryan, Seth Rollins promo back and forth. Wrestling Twitter absolutely loved it. Wrestling Twitter just loves the thought of Rollins moving on from the Mysterios, as do I. And then from there, we got the Mysterios coming out, and we got more Murphy, Rey Mysterio, Dominic Mysterio, Seth Rollins stuff, where Murphy went to shake Dominic's hand, and Dominic stormed off, and Rey was like, oh, what do I do? Uh, like, it was fine, you know, it, it was what it was. So yeah, that was SmackDown overall. Watchable show, nothing great, nothing bad. It was it was like an, it was an in the middle SmackDown. If you missed this show, go out and see the ending to the show with Reigns and Jey Uso, and I guess the women's contract signing if you want. So yeah, that's that's been the video. Like, comment, sub. Here's another drill. See ya.